How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Some days ago, I ran a poll to see what you wanted to see in the next video, whether it was characters or environments. Environments won. So if you want to stay up to date and make sure that you know when the polls go out so you can help decide what goes on the channel, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Now, today's video game was also chosen by you. A lot of people have been requested me uh, to cover Elden Ring. So that's what we're going to look at today. Let's get started. By the So as I mentioned, today we're going to be looking at environments. We have several environment props here. We have a weapon. That's because I always like to include weapons in the same category as environments. And we're also going to see something very special that I was able to found with this game. So if you want to look at that, you have to watch the whole thing. All right. So let's start with this one right here and as you can see this is the more simple of the bunch it's just a banner uh, i've been asked if for something like this can you just do one polygon and save a lot you can but something like this like a banner will have a wind effect and if you want it to move correctly like against the wind it needs certain bits of geometry so you can see that the faces are kind of big but like I've seen banners in other things like the latest Assassin's Creed that have a lot more geometry because of how they uh, want the cloth to move. This one doesn't seem to have too much, and I've seen these banners in game. They look fine. So again, it depends on what level of fidelity you're trying to get. But as you can see, this thing is just 368 uh, triangles. Over here, when it comes to uh, the part that's holding the banner together, you can see that it's very simple shape-wise. Usually, the round surfaces are the ones that have the most geometry, but in this case, it doesn't have uh, that much geometry. Um, let's go to the UVs straight away. Now, the way that the materials are assigned here is uh, very interesting because, as you can see, this texture, there's a lot going on here. That is not here. So let me select this whole thing. And you can see this whole piece that is holding together the banner is right here. So because of the way that this is laid out, it could make you think this is a UDIM tile. It's not a UDIM. The texture is actually this size. So these aren't two textures together. So it's just not square sized. Now, what's interesting about this is they're using texture atlases. This is where in one single texture sheet, you have different objects that you can unwrap. In this case, you don't need as much um, resolution for each object because the texel density that you need for the object in the game, it's not going to be that big. I don't believe I explained texel density before. So texel density is kind of like saying the amount of pixels that you're going to assign to a certain textures inside a game. There is, uh, aside from what people say on social media, inside a video game, there's no reason to have absolutely every texture be 4K. In fact, most games don't have most textures be 4K. Depending on the size of the object is the size of the texture or depending whether it's a hero character or just a background object. So for instance, a coin is not going to have the same resolution as the giant wall. So. That, that's the simplest way to put it. You're not going to find a coin that is 4K. Usually coins are, you know, very low resolution, like, I don't know, 128 by 128, something like that. So this is kind of like how you can get away with those sorts of things. Instead of creating more draw calls and adding more t uh, texture maps, you just have one texture map that can encompass various different objects like this one right here. Now let's go to the one for the banner. Just this one right here and if we select the whole thing you can see that it's just the texture so this this game not only has the horizontal but it has the vertical offsetted textures actually a lot of engines do these by the way i don't think unreal engine does it as much because i do know that you need a texture with the power of two 
if you want to have mid maps we'll talk about mid maps in another video but it has to do with like level of details of the texture uh so yeah as you can see not a uh, big of a deal just straight rectangles this texture has an already an alpha embedded in it so that's why if we go to the layout portion you can see that everything else is invisible all right let's continue with this object and if i turn on the wireframe you can see that again these objects for elden ring are not super high this is 21,000 polygons but it has several things like this jail cell right here and it has these columns which again they're round surface but they're not that um high in poly count now as you can see in these areas uh we don't have any chamfers we have seen chamfer areas in other video games not in this one because again it depends on what you're doing the rules are not one for everything when it comes to making game art it's depending on what your game needs in this case they decided to not do the chamfer and just use normal maps because these are objects that probably probably you're going to be seeing far away so as you can see here in the UVs, it has um, different materials. One uh, that we have right here, even though this, this object is completely merged. So we're looking at the metal wooden area that's here in the middle. It's represented by these UVs. This is the regular square textures. Now, if we grab something like, let's say, these columns on the side, and this is a texture that is squared, but as you can see, it contains several pieces. So if we select that column, you can see that it's unwrapped all around this area. The resolution is not the biggest, but you do have several pieces into one texture set. So this is a way that games are being optimized instead of having several textures for each. And even though you have different materials for this one single object, uh, instead of having several textures for different objects in the environments, you just have the one. And one of the things here is this thing, this column is instance, because if I select this other column, you can see that it just, everything is in the same place. We don't have any new UVs, so it's all the same thing. Now, when it comes to something like these stones, um, they're just a little bit more simple and... You can see them unwrap right here, but it's just a simple texture. Like there's not much to it. I know there's some variations in different parts, but from the UVs, you can see that this texture is just mostly like one single um, big rock that will encompass and will be used. And it's actually being used in several other objects. All right, I have a couple of things here that I want you to look at just so you see things that are laid down in the world, like this pile of bones. And if we go into the UVs, you can see an unwrap right here. Every single little bone is unwrapped. I think I'm missing kind of like the lower part of the spine. And there's a couple here, like the vertebrae and other types of stuff that I didn't select here. But uh, yeah, you can see it's that skeleton. It's unwrapped. It's very simple. This looks like the skull of a predator, but it's actually the skull of a human being. Now, let's just look at a weapon in this weapon. And I chose this, the golden epitaph is because this weapon has a lot of detail. So as you can see, there's a lot of geometry and a lot of detail that is geometry inside this weapon. There's, of course, a lot of detail that's normal map. But what's interesting is how much detail they add it to the weapon compared to some environmental pieces. And that has to do with the fact that this is a hero object in a sense, because your character was going to be wielding it. And it even has the bone here. Uh, the reason we, we haven't talked about rigging and bones and everything, but the reason why a bone, there's always a bone on weapons is because that's how you attach it to your players a very easy way to just determine an attach point to the player, especially in RPGs, we have so many weapons just switching around, just add a bone to the place where your player player character is going to grab it. And that uh, helps a lot when it comes to the in-game uh, interaction. 
So in the case of this sword, because of the blade piece is even though this it has this little statue right here that makes it look different on both sides, but the blade piece is the same on both sides. So one of the things that they did is a trick that we've talked about a lot in this channel, whether you just mirror a uh, part of the UVs outside because they are just going to inherit the next tile. And that's how you can save real estate for your texture. But you can see it here unwrapped the topology is very very nice even though this is hard surface you don't see as many triangles but you see very nice topology all around this is a very cool looking blade now there's uh some objects here that i just brought to show you something that this game has and one of the things that i found is when taking out certain models you I could like this uh, jumble of characters right here. I think they're like, you know, being worried about something. Um, you can take them out individually, but inside the game, there's also the files that are together. There is something in the engine where you can just have several components into one single asset. So for instance, this asset is effectively is just one asset, but it's comprised of several different characters that when I was looking into the files, you can actually extract these characters individually or you can have them together. Same thing goes for this uh, book place right here. So I'm sorry, bookshelf. So you could have the bookshelf by itself and the books on its own. And you can see that the books are the same. They're just instance and some of them are kind of like smaller than the others, but it's just an instance of the same book because it has the same texture. But this is something that if you're on the Unity side, it's called a prefab. And if you're on the Unreal Engine side, it's called a Blueprint Actor. And one of the, the things that helps a lot of having these is when you are doing level design, you, when you have a big open space, this helps a lot with the placement of things. So you don't have to put like a shelf and a book and a book and a book and a book. Somebody has already designed for you and you say like, okay, I need a bookshelf here with a bunch of books. So you just place it there. If you happen to need the bookshelf individually because there's an instance that needs to be empty, then great, you already have it. And by the way, same thing with the pile of bones right here. Uh, you can find these bones as a complete skeleton and this one is just scattered around and it's one single asset. So you place it on the map. Sometimes this is also done so it's not placed manually. It's because it's being placed procedurally. You also want to put it together because now you can just call it with a variable and have your whole system place it randomly uh, around the world. And that takes us into the next thing that we're going to see, which is what I call the big prefabs. So I was able to pull out these things like they're constructed this way and they're constructed from several assets that are already singled, getting the same point that I was showing before. I just wanted to show you in a big environmental piece. So as you can see, we have a cavern right here. And if I put on the materials, uh, you can see, of course, there's a lot more nuanced when you are in the engine. This part right here and this rocks actually has several materials. Of course, I cannot construct this shader in Blender. If you use something like Unreal Engine or Unity, there's a way to mix several maps together to create a shader that has variations. So you don't see the tiles right here. You have variations with several different textures that's usually achieved with mass. Uh, but I wasn't going to get to that in Blender because that's mostly an engine thing. I just wanted to show you that this is one of the caves where you have the entrance right here. And of course, you're you're just seeing the back face of the polygons over here and just a general so you can see how they assemble these whole things together it's not necessarily a cave that is constructed like a cave it's just several assets that are repeated and put together over and over that's usually uh, how many levels are built and then you just separate things by either using the kind of shader that i just explained or you have all your assets going around that can kind of mask seams and mask the tiling of the textures. However, if we go with something like this one right here, we can see that's kind of like the inside of a church. And if we go into the materials, you can see that we have the material for the floor and the columns. I didn't have the texture for this one. I just gave it a random color. 
But as you can see, everything else over here, this has several materials, not because of one object is because this is what I would call a prefab or a blueprint actor just for you to either put it in the level or maybe you're using a procedural generator. And if we look at the wireframe and the poly count, it's 108, but it's it's a lot. Uh, and I mean a lot in the sense that you have several assets here. It's not just one asset that's being that big. So you have this whole thing comprised. And one of the things I mentioned, uh, if you watch my Claire Obscure video about marketplace assets, at least for Unreal Engine, this is something that's very common. Usually when you get the assets from the marketplace, the high quality ones, uh, they give you the asset individually and they also give you a blueprint actor that has several components combined. So you can just use it and straight in your level and you have, don't have to be combining all those single pieces together just to create one piece. If we go back to materials, you can see that you know, the walls, very simple geometry wise. Then we have the columns and you can see that this wall is the same asset. So we have the same asset, but what breaks the repetition of it is the fact that you have other assets like these columns in between. In the case of the floor, I'm pretty sure there's other stuff going on here, probably objects added in, with foliage because Usually, uh, one thing that people confuse is uh, people think that foliage is only for actual foliage in games like plants and grass. You use foliage for a lot of things, just to paint stuff all over your map. So uh, there may be some of that going on here just to break a little bit of the tile. But you can see the difference in geometry when it comes to like this cave asset and um, this one right here. So yeah, I just wanted to show you uh, something different that uh, this is why I like to do these videos because every game has something new to teach us. Now, here's something that I wanted to mention. I've been seeing some people get mad in several of my videos because I don't show the process of on how to extract the models. That is not what this channel is about. The channel is about this us learning what is under the hood of video games, at least art wise. Uh, and for those people who are game artists and want to get a job in the industry, see what the industry expects of them uh, for indie game designers to see what the big guys are doing. And if you are neither of those and just interested in how video games work, this is also great for you too. But one of the things that these videos are not is to show you how to extract models. I've never said that. I've never said it on my titles or in my descriptions. So I don't understand why people are just getting mad at me because I don't share how to extract these models. That was never the reason for these videos. So Elden Ring, do you want to see more about these games? I know I just showed you environments, uh, but if I see there's a lot of interest, so leave me a comment down below. Tell me if you want to see characters from Elden Rings, we can get some enemies here to analyze them. We can also get like the player characters and armor. So let me know if you want to see those in the comment section down below. And just like with the Doom video, if I see there's a lot of interest, there will be another Elden Ring video. Now, if you like to support the channel, there's this thanks button. But if not, then just leaving a like and leaving a comment helps a lot. Subscribe if you haven't. It's totally free. And if you want to participate or know when I put up the polls uh, so you can decide what goes in the coming videos, uh, you need to also ring that bell for notification because I post that on the community tab. I usually leave that poll like for a day or two and then I, I take it down. So make sure you subscribe for that. Uh, all my socials are in the description down below. I'll see you next time.